Let's see what I've got this time. Stick around. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up and nice sort of stuff if you're into mailbag videos or electronic stuff in general. I always forget to say at the beginning, I always say at the end. So make sure you do that. Give us a thumbs up and stuff at the beginning. Have a chat down in the comments too. I want to hear what you think and have a chat with you and that sort of thing. If you've got any experience with any of these items I've got in the mailbag, then by all means, chime in down below and have a chat down below. You know, chat amongst yourselves, whatever, with me. You know, I want to have people chatting and talking to each other, trying to build a bit of a community here. We all clean my desk up. Anyway, where's my... my... Here it is. I'm hoping there's some parts in here for things I've been fixing. Ah... Excellent timing. Saw this on someone else's channel. I can't remember if it was Gadget Reboot or um Oh got any other one. You can tell me, can't you? What's the other channel? <laughs> yeah, I saw this on someone else's channel anyway. They they've had these. And um I was thinking of Gadget Reboot, I don't know why I was thinking that one, but I think it's someone else's channel. So he's got some little DuPont kind of things, that's not particularly exciting. But in here, somehow, how does that work? Slides down. Let's get one out. Any one will do. Go on, let's get one. There we go. Because I'm being, you know, careful about not tipping the whole thing over the place. Here we have one of these. What's this, you say? Well, if I can figure out which way it goes, which way does it go? So, try and get it focused. On there you can see there's a little mini grabber. See that? So I push that in. Little mini grabber on the end there. That's why you've got a G-Point connector on the end, so you use that to push it in. And the mini grabber comes out. This is perfect because I need some of these. Um, I'm not sure if that's insulated on the outside. I don't think it is. Oh, I don't know. Actually, it might be. It might be insulated. It feels plasticky. Well, I thought it would be insulated because they have to work, you know, close together. Let's get a meter, let's find out. Let's find out. So I stick a probe on here, probe on here, and yep, insulated. Stick it right on the end, here we go. Yep, insulated shaft, which is perfect. Exactly what you expect it to be. 10 of those little mini grabber things and they're really small grabbers which is why I got them I just wish I can remember which channel I saw them on it wasn't Volog could have been Gadget Reboot or Pile of Stuff, it could have been Pile of Stuff I saw it on that's the other I'm thinking of one of those two channels if you're not familiar with those two channels look them up, Pile of Stuff and Gadget Reboot they're both other channels which are nice ones to look at got some good content too so if they want to chime in and say something down below in the comments I know they watch my channel from time to time so if they see this one, they can say so in the comments and you can find a channel through the comment. How's that sound? Help support each other. And here's the instructions which came with it. Focus. And operating skills. Yeah. And that's what's on the back. Yeah, in a different language. Don't care about that myself, but someone might want to read that. There'll be links down below for these items as well, as usual. Try and figure out the best way of getting into this. Ah, oh, really? All that packaging. All that packaging for five capacitors. All that for five. Did it really need this? Seriously, people. At least these are the ones I've been waiting for, and I'll need four of them. So I've got one spare after this. Maybe should have bought some more. So these are 33 microfarad. These are for the Datron. I've got two Datron 1062s, the LS101 and the other one, and they both need all the caps replacing. Now, the, I had all the other caps in stock, I just didn't have any 33s. So 33 microfarad, and these are rated at 40 volts. Really? Hmm. I thought it was high voltage in that. That might be a problem. I thought it was high voltage. Hold on. No, we're good. This is what's in here already, you see. 33 microfarad, 40 volt. So it's the same spec, basically. So that's all right. It's, it's, it's like a 40 volt supply, if I remember rightly. So I'm just a bit puzzled by that. Anyway, same rating, so that should be fine. I've got no idea what's in this one. It's pretty heavy. It's a bit puzzling. Ah, that's why. Batteries. 
interesting packaging, but okay. So these should be, yep, 35Es. I've featured these previous times more than once. Should be the same, yep, 35Es. Yep, I'll go and measure one, random one, randomly picked one out. I'll go and measure this, make sure it's um, about 48 grams, and I'll come back. Okay, battery measured, it weighed 49 grams, so that's basically smack bang on what I'd expect it to be, 48 to 50 grams, that's fine. Bunch more of those, which I need for my projects, which are sitting over here. Needed some more batteries for those. So that's good, I've got all the batteries I need now, I don't need to get any more, I think. At least I hope not. Things get a bit expensive. Alright, what's in here? Probably more parts that I'm waiting for. Well, I really hope so. I'm waiting for some ICs, some auto couplers. Oh, this for a little while. Bags of bags. Alright, let's look at the seat here. What turned up? 6N136. Uh, 10 of those turned up, excellent. And photo coupler, oh, no, other ones, different ones, different brand. So I've got 20 in there of that type. Yeah, 20 auto couplers, two different types. We've got slightly different specs, I think, if I remember rightly. Now, the reason I've got two different brands because I'm not quite sure what is going to work best in the Datrons. Uh, in case it even matters, it may not matter at all. It might work fine with either one. So what we got here. So that's yellow five one two five five. Yellow five one two five five, and seven sixty three one three six. I don't really want to get them out unless I'm going to use them, or until I really use them. There you go, just fit that fairly well. On semi, that one. So I've got 10 of those. And the other brand. And it's upside down. Of course it is. I can't remember what brand that one was. It's just made in Japan, I don't know. Someone made them. So these are for the Datron. Um, these have got, it's got a bunch of these in it. Oh, I don't know. Five, I think, something like four or five in each one. I thought, well, I'm not sure about the aging on those, how good they are. So I thought I'll just replace them. If I have problems with any sensing or something not looking quite right or weird behaviour, I'm just going to replace them. And I didn't actually have any in stock. So now I've got 20 of two different types. Because hopefully one's right and does the job with a bit of luck. I think I've got some other ones coming as well. MCT6 is coming as well. I think I've got two or three different versions of those. Because they've got slightly different speeds and that can affect the propagation through the instrument. So. There's something to be considered in these things. Alright, last thing for today. If I can open the thing. Here we go, close enough. Um, yeah, yeah, oh yes. How convenient. I believe it's a battery load tester. Just chuck some batteries in. Here you go. Um, on. It's thin as life so you can see it. Could use a filter over that really, couldn't it? Yeah, it's a battery load tester, I think. So you can actually do testing on batteries to see how they perform, if I remember rightly. And it's fairly cheap to solve the purchase because I'm using all these batteries and thinking, well, it'd be a nice, if I had a nice, quick, easy way to test these things, apart from my DC electronic load, obviously. How's this thing work? It's all in Chinese. You want, want to read that for me? Chips, lays it off. <laughs> of course it is. Yeah, lays it off. Alright, let's turn this back off for now. So, how does this thing work? It's an XHM240 apparently. Right, any ideas anyone? Well, let's push a random button and see what happens, shall we? What could possibly go wrong? <coughs> From what I can tell, I've had a bit of a play around with it already just now, just try and make it sound like a complete fault when I'm using it. This battery on the left here powers the unit, powers the control circuitry. The battery on the right is the one which is being tested. So when you turn it on, that is this battery voltage over here. And you can change between milliamp hours and milliwatt hours as far as the readings. And then you can set the voltages you want as well. So I've set the voltage to say with you know 3.1 volts, which would be nice typical voltage for one of these I suppose, maybe 3.2, you'd be a little bit safer. When you turn it on, maybe i have to do a reset first. 
the moment I turn on. Oh, come on. Seriously? What about I turn on now? We've got bad voltage. Not sign. Nothing. So a little bit of a play of this just now, I'm just trying to figure out how it works. It's fairly straightforward. We'll power it up. So the battery on the left powers the unit and the battery on the right is the battery which is under test. The unit's also got this um, JST connector over here as well, which obviously allows you to supply power to having a battery. So up to you how you do it. So there's the display. Um, threshold's currently set at 3.1 volts. And the actual battery voltage is currently 3.9 volts. Um, so let's turn it on. And that will now drain the battery into this resistor. Just here, which is a 10 watt, 8 ohms resistor. It's a very low load. It's not getting overly hot. I can feel a little bit of warmth there. It's gradually warming up. So it's obviously a long term test rather than a short term test. Which is probably a good thing because it means you're doing a lower C rating on the discharge. I just want to see if I can get this battery voltage to drop a little bit. And on this button here, you switch between the current voltage of the battery, milliamp hours or milliwatt hours on the display, which is what you can see there on that top LED. If you get a fully charged battery, chuck it in here, leave it going, and it will tell you when it's finished, what the capacity was when it's finished discharging down to that set voltage, whichever you had. So over here, but I've got 3.1 volts here, make it 3.2 instead. Seems fairly simple. Now if you hold this button down, it does a reset. And just pushing it will turn it on and off. And I can go back to battery voltage there. We're still seeing 3.9. I want to see it drop down. I might leave it going for a bit longer and come back. So what I'm not sure about actually as far as design, you've got this resistor here which is getting hot. Right next to a battery, which you shouldn't get hot. And there was space on the top of the board here. I mean, I could have put this resistor along the top of the board, which would have been further away from the batteries. Um, then it wouldn't be radiating heat into the battery. I just think that's a bit of an oversight. It's still only 3.9 volts, it hasn't dropped down yet, so I'll keep trying. So this is still saying 3.9 volts. Just check this. Is it really 3.9 volts? So I'll stick a probe on the battery there, and on the other end of the battery here, we're getting 3.4. That's not 3.9, is it? So if I stop it, it's still saying 3.9 on the display. And battery is 3.4. So why is it saying 3.9 volts when that's actually not what it is? What's going on here? I'm just puzzled by that. It looks like it's actually not reading the battery voltage correctly. Let's wait for it to reset itself. So, so far it's pulled out 61 milliamp hours. Still says 3.9 volts. If I do a reset, does that change anything? Still says 3.9 volts. What's going on? That's only 3.5 volts. So, not that. What's going on? Why is it a battery voltage not reading correctly? Is it crashed? Let's reboot it. So it says 3.9. I might need to look into this one a bit more because it doesn't seem to be correct. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, all the usual stuff, and share the video if you think people are interested, and have a chat down below in the comments amongst yourselves or have a chat with me if you've got any experience with this thing. I'd love to hear from you and tell me what you know about them. Yeah, no manual is always helpful. Anyway, catch you later. See you in the next video. Bye. Stick a probe on there, probe on here, nothing there, on the very end, yep, that's insulated. I only can't see what I'm doing, nothing. Okay, milliamp hours, milliwatt hours, 
So that's changing that. Three. Is this a load? Hmm. What's it doing? So it says mini amp hours, mini watt hours down the bottom underneath that button. The other button says so there's plus and minus over here. This one doesn't say. You know what it is? Uh, I saw it on something of his channel. And um, I thought, that looks interesting. If I can figure out how to use it, that'd be great. Um, what does it do? That's obviously down. That's voltage cutouts. One volt, because that's, that's a U, but it's obviously meant to be a V. So if I, is that supposed to be a voltage cutout? So if I do 3.9 or 3.8 volts here. It's not doing that. There. Did I? You see that? There you go. That works better. Should have thought of that before. So that light's on. Don't know what's it doing. Any questions? Any ideas? I'm just pushing the buttons randomly. That seems to be on all the time now. Have I crashed it now? Let's hold it down. No. Nope. Nope. Ah, I've got about 4 volts to start flashing. 11. Ah! That was just as warm. So yes, that is loading it. So what this is doing, you'll set a voltage. Okay, right, I think I've got this now. So you set a stop voltage of whatever you want. It's kind of set at 3 volts. Let's reset, okay. Turn it on, and I think it's discharging one of these batteries, probably that one, through this resistor here until it gets to that stop voltage. So you see voltage, milliamp hours, or, or milliwatt hours, and the current battery voltage. So, okay, so that's, that's it. This is the load tester, and it will just heat this resistor up. Yep, that's definitely warming up. Um, yeah, okay, so which batteries are testing? I'm guessing it's only one of them. I'll take one of the batteries out, what happens? Okay, so that kills the, the, pro, the power. So does that mean that this one here is powering the unit, and this one here is the test battery, is that right? Looks that way. No. Uh, Yep, 0.1 volt showing up, so yep, no voltage. So, okay. There is some Chinese down here, maybe it's saying what's what as well. Entirely possible. Right, so this one powers the unit, this is the test battery. So, I use this ball to test one 18650 battery. Let's check its capacity ratings. So, I got these because I wanted to obviously check the capacity on these in a nice, easy way. So, as I said, I could use my DC electronic load, but. Um, I thought I'd get a little gadget like this because it looks like it was interesting. Let's reset that. And, um, yeah, so you can choose your distance. I'm surprised it goes down to 1 volt though, that's pretty. You know, it's an 18650. It's 1 volt's a little bit excessive, I think. Anyway. So I suppose I'll test my nonies down to say I think my cutout on my stuff is about 3.15 volts per cell. 
So what I'll probably do is get one that's fully charged and actually do a drain on it and do a test and see how they come out.